I have a little tip to share today. This is about deconstructing magazines, catalogs, books, you know, taking the guts out, um, or as I like to say, disemboweling literature. So yeah, that's what we're going to do today. And I'll tell you how this came about or, or why I decided to do this. I thought this might be helpful because it was helpful to me, but here's what happened. I found this restoration hardware catalog from 2012. I was going to just pitch it, right? Then I remembered how much I like the pages of the catalog. You know, they're fairly large and I like the paper and it, it just seemed a shame to throw it out. So I thought, well, okay, I'll just go in and um, I'll start gluing some pages together to work on and see what happens. So I did. I opened it up. I started gluing oh, two, three, four pages together. Got me a good stack glued. I'm good with the buckling. It's just yummy texture, so that's good. But um, I'd use some watered down Elmer's because, you know, I thought, all right, if I do a whole bunch of them, I don't want to waste all of my Yes Paste or my Mod Podge. I'm just going to use Elmer's. It's cheap. It's easy. You know, go for it. So uh, they were really wet and buckly. And I am very impatient, as we know, so I thought I would just speed up the drying process by sticking the whole catalog in the oven, as I tend to sometimes do. <laughs> So I had put, you know, pieces of uh, parchment paper or whatever I had, deli sheets, I think, between each gluey set and stuck it in the oven for about maybe five or six minutes at 200 degrees. You know, kept a close eye on it. Everything seemed to be fine. I um, took it out of the oven, opened it up to check and see if my pages were any drier and the whole thing, this whole cover came off. I, it didn't even occur to me that heating it like that would melt the glue in the binding because this is a glue bound catalog, you know, just a cheap glue bound catalog. Totally melted the glue. So, okay, that's fine. Pulled my pages out that I had glued together and uh, dried them separately, no biggie, but then thought, well, I wonder if the whole thing would just come apart really easy now that I've melted the glue, and the answer is yes, it did. I started peeling pages off from the melty glue and found they were really easy to pull out. You know, you do get the little, this is from the, the binding process, it's not a completely smooth edge but it's certainly a lot smoother than you get when you tear pages out of a magazine or catalog and it's a lot easier than trying to use your exacto to cut them out especially if you're doing a whole bunch so I got quite a few separated then they started kinda tearing again and getting hard to pull off so I stuck it back in the oven for three or four minutes pulled it out peeled off a bunch more and just kept doing that until nearly the whole catalog was peeled it was just, I was so excited how easy it was to disassemble this magazine and get the majority of the pages intact, you know, neatly removed from the binding. And then, of course, when you're done, you get the whole cover, which is one nice big piece to use. So there you go. You can heat the binding of glue-bound magazines and catalogs to easily remove the papers so that you can use them for painting on or collage or junk journals or whatever. Um, if putting it in the oven makes you nervous, you can do um, heat it with your heat gun. You know, it's going to take a while, but it's, it's doable. Um, I'm going to finish this in a minute. I've still got a, you know, a few more to pull out of there. It needs to be reheated. But I wanted to show you some other examples. This, these catalogs and magazines come into the house all the time, and they're the ones that are staple bound. And these, I usually just pry the staples up. You can use an actual staple puller, or <laughs> if you're 
like me, just use the tools that God gave you. <laughs> Remove these staples, and then you've got all of these nice, really big pages to paint on. And these are the kind that I used for that, um, for my 2015 planner. You know, for the accordion spine, I had a long piece of paper. This is all it was. So, anytime one of these comes in and it's got good glossy paper, I just um, disembowel it this way. <laughs> it's very easy and neat. And now I've got a bunch of papers to paint. And after my success with the Restoration Hardware Catalog, I thought, well, I bet that'll work for any glue-bound magazine. And I think that it will, but um, it varies. This Texas Monthly did come apart neatly, as you can see. So I've got my whole cover piece to use. And we're going to talk about these end papers in a minute. And then this is the, the book block or the magazine block, whatever. But I noticed on here, this glue is a lot thicker than what was on the Restoration Hardware. And I noticed that I had to leave it in the oven for about 10 minutes before the front cover would let up. And then it was another five to get the back to let go. And that's just because this is a much better glue. And you will almost always get the page next to the cover is going to want to stay with the cover because it's attached to that. Um, I'll show you that in this book here in a minute. But you can see, this just makes me laugh. That's Wendy Davis, and I just love that picture. <laughs> but um, anyway, you can't really tell how well it's glued in there. You know, I had no idea that the glue on here was, was much sturdier than the one in the catalog until I melted it. So I think most any glue-bound magazine you can do this with. And I'm thinking this should work for books, too, because even stitch-bound books are glued. There's usually that fabric that's over the stitching that's glued down, and if you've ever taken a book apart, you know that it is glued down like my buddy's business. I forgot my exacto, the one tool that I needed for my demonstration. Here it is. I got it. Hang on. Okay, I'll show you how to take a book apart. This is not an old book. Old books are, are much easier to take apart, to take, remove the covers from the book block, um, usually because the spine is usually broken, it's loose, and all you have to do is just slit it and the thing falls off. It's really easy. But books that are not that old are a little more difficult because they're glued. they got a lot of glue on them. So you open it up, and this, this is the end paper. There's one on the front and on the back. It's usually a single sheet that's glued to the inside of the cover, front and back. And then the other half of the sheet is left free. So this is called the paste down end paper. This is called the free end paper, front and back. Then next to that, there is not always, but sometimes there's one more sheet. And you can see how this sheet, you know, when you pull on the end paper, it wants to go with it. It's attached to that end paper. This is the fly leaf. Some people call this the fly leaf. That's technically not really right. This is the fly leaf. <laughs> the fly leaf is attached to the free end paper, front and back. So if you pull this, there's your fly leaf. And that's what I was kind of showing you in the magazine. Even in magazines, there's usually a fly leaf or an end paper. See, this one wants to stay attached to the cover. So let it. Then you can, you know, you can go back and neatly remove it later. But if you start trying to remove it in the beginning, you know, this was when I first pulled the cover back you'll get some tearing. So that's just an FYI. So when you're taking a book apart, you want to cut the covers off, but leave the end paper and the flyleaf, if there is one, with the cover. So you can take your X-Acto and just make a cut right there. 
front and back. So, very simple. I think a lot of the times people will have trouble separating the cover from the book block because they start trying to cut right here and it causes a mess because these two papers want to stay with this one and then you, you just get a mess. This neat, clean, easy. Now you can go in and cut these away if you want to or whatever. But here is the butt block. It's got this uh, reinforcement here that's glued on there with something that would rival cement. And yeah pull these off. Usually I would get after that with my Dremel, but I'm wondering if I can melt it enough to loosen it and to get this this glue, this reinforcement stuff off. So I'm going to stick this in my oven at 200 degrees for, I don't know, 5-10 minutes, keep an eye on it, and then we'll see what happens. Okay, it's been probably about 5 minutes. Pull my book out of the oven and it does appear that this is helpful. Making it easier. This is nice. Oh yeah, normally that's a beast to get off of there. Alright, now. Now what have we here? Plastic knife, handy. Mm-hmm. That's where I want to be. Okay, I'm gonna stick it back in, and let's see if we can get this rubbery stuff off of there. Give it, a, give it another five minutes or so. Okay, I'm slowly working this rubbery stuff off of here, just heating it up and then scraping with the thing. And you know what? I could have sworn that I took one of these apart one time and found that it was stitch bound underneath. But I must, I don't know, I must be thinking of something else because this is glued. This is just one of those weird, cheap, glue bound, hard back books. So, I am going to continue to um, work this off of here and then separate these pages just like I did in the magazine so then I'll have a bunch of loose pages to use for collage and stuff and these are really great for running through your printer and print something fun on them you know yeah so I'm gonna keep doing that um, but I think I've made my point just the whole idea is to when you want to unbind something that has glue on the binding, heat it up, either in your oven or with a heat gun. Um, microwave would probably work, stick it in the microwave, whatever, just to heat it up and loosen the glue and they come apart really easy so that'll save you some time and trouble. So, that's it on the um, how to disembowel literature lesson. The end.